You see, I take these glasses off. She looks like a regular person, doesn't she? Put them back on, formaldehyde face. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. This is They Live, the Alien 2-Pack. They influence our decisions without us knowing it. They numb our senses without us feeling it. They control our lives without us realizing it. They live. A rugged loner stumbles upon a terrifying discovery. Ghoulish creatures are masquerading as humans while they lull the public into submission through subliminal advertising messages. Only specially made sunglasses make the deadly truth visible. Using technology I didn't even think existed and a budget I didn't even think was possible, I've retrofitted the camera with the same lenses that John Nada has in the film. That, that way you guys can actually see the true form of these alien monstrosities. We're going to stop the tape measure to the very top of her head. Good intro. Thank you very much. I can read a script. According to the tape measure, the Ultra Measuretron 5000 is the very top of female alien. You're looking at the figure standing 7.7 .7 inches in height, and don't worry, I didn't include the display stand for that. Uh, that works out in centimeters to be 19.7, so about almost 20 centimeters tall. And uh, we are going to switch that over and measure now male alien. You can insert any name that you want for these characters. Stopping it right to the very top there. I don't even think they actually have names. To the very top there. Well, I, they have names in the real world. I just don't know the names of these specific characters. 7.7. .7, stay on target. Stay on target. 7.7 .7 inches in height. And that, in centimeters, works out to be 19.7. Almost 20 centimeters tall. We get some accessories, some pamphlets for you to read if you'd like, and making use of that same technology. On the very front, we've got buy. On the back, no ideas. And on the inside, submit, marry, and reproduce. These are all done using a, a laminated paper, so the longevity of these will only be determined by how well you care for these things. If you keep them flat, or most definitely put them back in the packaging, they should hold till the test of time. If you just willy-nilly throw them around, being that they are made of the same type of material that would be of a crumpling nature, then yes, something like this, being that they're made out of paper, will likely wrinkle and get damaged. So you just want to store that away. The smaller pamphlet and further reading material, unfortunately, did get a bit of a snag when I was trying to pull it out of the clamshell. This one says obey. This one says stay asleep. And then the inside says watch TV and no imagination. So I like the fact that we do get included those. And I really don't expect those necessarily to be a plastic for the really what they end up serving to be. They most definitely could have easily just made these in paper, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Certainly not made of paper though, the other accessory come included with this is the TV set. The TV is a really nice touch. I would have to go back and double check if this is a similar TV, the one that came included with the Nightmare on Elm Street accessory set. I'm going to mark that on my agenda book and put that in my Trapper Keeper for now. Just remind me if you can. Down below it says Sleep. I like that as a nice touch. And you can see uh, the leader there with the Obey behind him. This would have been a great opportunity if this was a lenticular front screen where you could have tilted it. It would have looked like a human. Tilted it another way, it would have looked like an alien. But I think at the end of the day, I mean, it would have been jarring to have the screen constantly shifting around for you. So I think just having the screen look as if, just as is, I think is perfectly fine. The TV is just a great looking accessory. There's a little a holding hook hole. That's a lot of H's and unnecessary additional words. But there's a hole on the back. That's what I wanted to say. Put a thumbtack or nail into the wall, something that's not going to cause a lot of damage, and you can hang that on top of it, and you've got yourself a TV that you can pose and display behind the figures. Those are your accessories. Uh, one accessory that didn't come included with it is the display stand. I've simply just added that because the female alien does have some tricky, difficult 
time standing. It's just because the feet are really close together. And of course, she's also wearing high heels. That doesn't help the matter either. Looking at the gruesome mugs, and again, utilizing technology. I don't even know how we could have even afforded such a thing. Uh, we can look at her true state. And what a gross, disfigured face. Now, that's awfully harsh to be saying that about her. I mean, don't judge a book by its cover, humbled reviewer. I'm sure she's a lovely person inside, even though the front, even though the face of her just looks like a big giant walking scab. Uh, she is gruesome, yes, um, but again, I'm sure she's got a great personality to her. She's got long hair, very 80s style hairstyle. It's two-toned, in other words, they're using a darker coloring of, of brown, and they've simply just uh, touched the tips in a lighter shade of brown. The face sculpts are really quite good, horrifying especially an eight-year-old version of me, this is a true story, who flipped on the TV one ill-fated night and came across They Live, and came across a scene in which They Live were showing their, their true selves. I think that might be the earliest memory I have of a horror film, and it certainly lasted with me all of these years. I mean, looking at the faces now, it still reminds me of when I was eight years old. Fine work, John Carpenter scaring and scarring me for life. Thank you for that. This one does have the uh, the pearls. The pearls seem like they're kind of large, but I mean, again, for the 80s style, I guess that would make some sense. She does have a shirt and skirt, both of the same material. I realized later that I rhymed doing that. And she does also have a watch. One unfortunate trade-off for the fact that she does have short sleeves is the fact that she does have, well, they did try to use the same plastic as the painted sections of her hand. But unfortunately, the red is completely omitted here. I guess it could have potentially been painted in and they could have painted it right to the tops of her, of her elbows. Ultimately, they only gave her just the same coloring of plastic, completely omitting the additional scarred patches of red. So that's unfortunately the one draw, drawback, not necessarily drawback, but certainly one thing that's noticeable by the fact that she does have shorter sleeves. This one is a retro cloth figure and like the namesake says, she is wearing a real, uh, a real fabric outfit very tight and fitted to her outfit, really hugging all those curves. And then she comes down, well, it comes down to uh, her legs as well as a pair of high heels. She does have peg holes on the undersides of her feet, so I would certainly most definitely sign my name to the petition of saying, use display stands. I guess that's not really it. That's more a platform than a petition. Uh, certainly for the female figures, I would love to see them actually incorporate and include display stands because again like a figure like this she really is going to have a tough difficult time of standing because there's very little of her footprint actually touching the surface for the articulation on female alien her head rotates back and forth it's sort of limited as you would probably expect it by the fact that she does have the longer hair it does really limit what you can do back to forth and i worry as i am turning her hair that i'm not going to clip her pearls and break them and have them fall across the flooring here Shoulders hinge outward at about a 90 degree angle. You can move the arms technically all the way around, but you're going to get a little wrapped up, so to speak, with the way that fabric is just going to bunch around the shoulders. But in theory, you could rotate the arms all the way around if you wanted to. See? Just in case you didn't believe me. I was almost expecting this figure to have shoulder pads. That seems so much the trademark for the 80s, but I guess this specific female alien didn't buy in to speaking of, uh, you know, propaganda, didn't buy into the propaganda that big shoulder pads was in. I'd like to think even when they were in, big shoulder pads were never in. I think we were just lied to and bought into it, drank the shoulder, the big shoulder uh, shoulder pad Kool-Aid. Everybody was doing it. I didn't do it, but most women, I think back in the day, loved their big shoulder pads. They looked like quarterbacks from football teams. It was ridiculous, but that was the 80s. Bend at the elbow. I lost track of what I was doing here for a second. I'm so sorry. Bend at the elbow, and uh, she does also have a rotation in the hand. Hinges back and forth. She has a waist swivel. Uh, the legs split out, but very limited amount of spreading those legs. And uh, you can move them forward and back, but again, they're very limited. She does have a bend at the knee, both knees. That's how they work. And uh, she does also have the hinges in the feet. I think for the sake of this, so that she simply doesn't fall over on me, that would be embarrassing. 
I'm going to put non-shoulder pad wearing. I'm, I'm sure the shoulder pad she is wearing of a limited size, but certainly not the... Have you seen some of the shoulder pads in some of these 80s? Especially actresses. Dynasty was just riddled. I know I'm dating myself. Riddled with large shoulder padded actresses. I move forward. Having a look at the male, we've talked too much about shoulder pads. Having a look at the male alien, it's pretty much the same. The same face, although more based on a male uh, portrait. You know, uh, the hair sculpt kind of looks like Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak. Maybe he was. Maybe they haven't had the technology available or the sunglasses available to be able to look at Pat Sajak in his truest form. Maybe this is Pat Sajak and Vanna White, for all we know. That would explain why Wheel of Fortune has stayed on the networks as long as it has. They're aliens. I, well, I thought I heard a knocking at the door. Maybe they realize I found out. The sculpting is, like I said, the exact same. Sort of that star configuration on their silver eyeballs. I like the touches of that. And again, you've got that. It's not quite scarring, but the colors of the blue and the red kind of remind me of Icy's uh, cherry and blue raspberry, if I'm not mistaken, on the face of Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak's going to be giving me a call, I'm sure. Tell me to stop that. Uh, his tie is done in a, uh, a yellow, although it's a little bit far up there uh, on the collar. Let's see if I can actually get the collar around that. It's a little too high for my liking. It should be just a little bit further down. The jacket is tailored with three buttons on the front. Large buttons also, I noticed. And he's also got a matching pair of pants. Uh, that's a decent, suited, well-dressed, tailored alien. It's just a shame that they are wanting us to be submissive and, you know, us to sleep all the time. For his uh, articulation... Oh, and also, this one has a little handkerchief. It's not removable. I don't know... People that want removable handkerchiefs likely would be disappointed by that news, but you can't remove it. It's permanently in place. Articulation on him, though he is a male retro cloth figure, would basically be about the same as the female. The arms hinge outward. Again, all the same stuff that we talked about. Bend at the elbow, the hands. Uh, waist, no crunch, and uh, legs forward and back. All that same stuff. Swivel on the top cut of the thigh, right there, right there. Swivel on the top cut of the thigh. Hinge at the knee. And then he does have the hinge in the foot. Uh, I did notice that this particular figure, what was the recent one that we had a look at? Was it Stooge, I believe, from Night of the Demons? Benefited from having articulated feet. Uh, these ones, unfortunately, the male alien still, unfortunately, is relegated to just straight out swivels. Hopefully they, down the road they can uh, maybe look to having these ball jointed. Because I just feel like ball joints would really allow these figures to stand better than what they do. Thank goodness the male does stand perfectly fine. The female stands a-okay, somewhat okay. Very good, reported on a, graded on a report card. She probably could use a display stand. So, if you happen to have a uh, display stand, I just happen to have a handful of them readily at the available. I should have them on my wrist so I can just shoot out at one as I need it. I did grab one. I would definitely say use one for the female alien because I don't think she's going to really have a, a, a real easy time, an easy go standing on her own. Thank goodness she doesn't have the additional weight of such mammoth quarterback size shoulder pads, but that's for another story. Of course, seeing such a cool and yet still creepy set like this does leave the inevitable question in limbo. Will we ever see ourselves a John Nada? I don't know what the licensing would be for the likeness of the late Rowdy Roddy Piper, but I would most definitely want to see him get a fair treatment and a retro cloth figure of his own. After all, if we are going to be having somebody to stop the alien invasion, it's already started with these two. We definitely need the hero from the movie, and John not being part of the equation so far, I think obviously... We're all asking NECA toys if we can get ourselves finally a retro cloth version of John Nada. How cool would that be? Rowdy Roddy Piper as a retro cloth figure. Of course, he's going to have to have his glasses. He's probably going to be all out of his bubble gum, but he's still going to be cooking, kicking A. We're still family friendly, so we're not going to use the full word. Have you picked up this one for yourself? A segue into something else. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of They Live, the Alien 2-Pack, female and male alien. Pat Sajak and Vanna White. That's how the show has been around for so long. 
All I thought it was was just because senior citizens loved watching it and Jeopardy. Little did I know they were actually part of the alien invasion. That would also explain why Pat Sajak looks the exact same as he did in the 80s. It's all coming together right now. Yes, I'm going to go change my tinfoil hat. If you guys are new to this channel or longtime viewers, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Stay tuned and periodically swing on over to the homepage. Did you know that I just recently did a review of the Susie and Stooge, uh, uh, the Night of the Demons two-pack that was the Scream exclusive? Did you know that? You probably didn't. If you didn't, it's probably because you're not checking out the homepage on a regular basis to see if what new videos that you may have missed out on will all be available on the homepage. Keep your peepers peeled, members of the mob. There's going to be definitely more NECA reviews coming your way. Got a whole bunch of stuff we're going to be having a look through. And again, a big thank you to the folks over at NECA Toys who were nice enough to send this sample my way. With, like I said, a whole lot of videos coming your way, there's going to be a whole lot of viewing on your part. So as again, keep your peepers peeled and stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.